was looking forward to special music. (laughs) At any rate, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. You glad this morning? Yes. 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 Um, Last time we talked about letting go. Um, Letting go not just in the sense of forgiveness, but also letting go of those things that aren't good. Right? Traditions, philosophies that, that may seem to hold you back, prevent you from being all that you can be in Christ. Um, a matter of life and death. Um, this week is, a, is another, another life and death matter, I think. Um, a little introduction first. Um, are, are, are you familiar with optical illusions? Yeah. Optical illusions, um, those images that, that appear as one thing when you see it the first time, and then you look at it again, and it, it appears as something else. Yeah? Yeah? Um, when I was much younger, I used to really like optical illusions. You, you guys like optical illusions? Yeah. yeah? Okay. All right. Um, one of my favorites was, was a silhouette of, of two heads that sometimes appeared to be a silhouette of a vase. Yeah. Um, some of my friends would argue that it was a silhouette of a vase that sometimes appeared to be two heads. You have friends like that? Yeah. Yeah. Others would argue that the proper pronunciation was not vase, but vase. Yeah. And my friends would start behaving like enemies until we would each go our own way, convinced that the other was wrong. Yeah. Um, sometimes kids can have challenging relationships. And adults can, too. We're going to talk about that challenge. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. once noted in one of his sermons, he said that hate multiplies hate in a descending spiral of violence and is just as injurious to the person who hates as to his victim. But love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend, for it has creative and redemptive power. Uh, I've entitled today's message, The Beloved enemy, the beloved enemy. Let's pray together, shall we? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Father, that you allow us to share this time, this sacred time, with you and with each other. We ask, Father, for a special outpouring of your spirit. Open our hearts as we open the word. May we receive that special blessing that you have in store for us, according to your will. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The beloved enemy. I would posit to you this morning that For some, one of the most difficult doctrines in Christianity is that of loving your enemy. Loving your enemies. Although this doctrine has a a unique complexity that is worthy of exploration, I, I don't suppose that the difficulty we have with loving enemies is solely an academic difficulty. I don't think it's a brain difficulty at all. I think it's a heart difficulty. In our scripture, Matthew chapter 5, we read earlier that, in verse 43, we read that, ye have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. And this is Jesus talking, and well, the question that I have is, when would, when would they have heard such a thing? 
when would they have heard, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy? Was it with Samson? We start thinking about all of the, the heroes, right? Let's turn to Judges 16 and verse 30. Judges chapter 16. And let's look at verse 30. This is after Samson has been captured. He's now in the in the the temple of the Philistines. Um, Let's look at verse. Let's first look at verse 28, and then we'll, we'll continue on. Judges 16, looking at verse 28, beginning there. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the Lord's and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Was it Samson? Maybe it was David. David. First Samuel seventeen forty five. First Samuel chapter 17, and let's, let's begin verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this, this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. And all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose, and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. These are the stories that the Hebrews heard. They were valiant stories. They they loved to hear them over and over again. What about the song of Moses? Yeah. All right. Exodus 15. Let's go there. Beginning with verse 1. Exodus chapter 15, beginning with verse 1. The Bible says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him in habitation. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Yeah, remember that scripture song? 
<laughs> Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths has covered them. They sank into the bottom of a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. Dashed the enemy in pieces. Ah. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Dash him in pieces. Cut off his head. Clobber him under the weight of the pillars of the temple. And give glory to God. The song continues of the song of Moses. I, 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 it, and in the greatness, in verse 7, and in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright as in heap, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Thou didst blow with thy wind. The sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Thou stretched out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. Song of Moses. Valiant song, song of victory. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Jonah, Jonah, chapter three. Jonah chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Dashed into pieces. Head cut off. Fallen under the weight of the stones. Just as overthrown, right? Doesn't say all that. Just overthrown. But then what happens? Verse 5 says, So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed the fast and, and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published in Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them and he did it not. Verse four, uh, chapter 4, verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I prayed thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarsus for, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful 
slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth thee of the evil? Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Jonah didn't like the Ninevites. In fact, he hated them. They were enemies. His reluctance in preaching to them was that they would repent and turn from their violence, turn from their evil ways. And the word of the Lord came on to Jonah a second time, telling him to go and preach that I bid thee. But Jonah's sermon was yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. I looked up overthrown in the Strong's Another word for overthrown was repent. Turn away. Nineveh would turn away from its violence and from its evil ways. Nineveh would be destroyed, dashed in pieces, its head cut off. But in the way that Jonah feared it would happen. Jonah knew that this was going to be the way that they would be destroyed, dashed in pieces. They would turn from their evil ways. They would cease to be enemies of God. Let's look at David again because we know that David was a man after God's own heart, right? David's view of life matured as he got older. First Samuel 24, verse 1. Let's go there. First Samuel 24, um, let's begin with verse 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coats by the way where was a cave and Saul went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe, privately. The same David that cut off the head of Goliath. Here his enemy has been delivered to him and he cuts off Saul's skirt. Verse 6, And he said unto, him, unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. What happens to Saul? But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt? Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord had delivered thee today into mine hand in the cave, and some bade me kill thee, but mine eye spared thee, 
And I said, I will not put forth mine hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and killed thee not, know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand, and I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. As saith the, the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceedeth from the wicked, but my hand shall not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog? After a flea? The Lord therefore be judge and judge between me and thee and see and plead my cause and deliver me out of thine hand. Verse 16, and it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul. And Saul said, is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And thou hast showed this day how thou hast dealt well with me. For as much as when the Lord had delivered me into thine hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good for that, for that thou hast done unto me this day. And now, behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king. And that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Saul thought it was strange that if a man find his enemy, he would let him go away. But then he blesses David. Wherefore the Lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day, for what thou hast done unto me this day. I know that thou shalt truly be king. The acknowledgement. Saul was smitten, but he was smitten in his heart. The destruction that was reaped that day was the destruction of evil. Saul was not looking now to hurt David. He blesses him. Jesus continues in Matthew chapter 5, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Let's go back to David again. Lest we think this was an isolated incident. Second Samuel now. Second Samuel chapter 18, I'm sorry. 18th chapter of Second Samuel. Let's begin with verse 5. The Bible says, And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim, where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David, and there was there a great slaughter that day of 20,000 men. For the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country, and the wood devoured more people than that day than the sword devoured. The wood devoured more people than the sword devoured. 
Verse 9, And Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon a mule. And the mule went under the thick bows, the boughs of a great oak, and his head caught hold of the oak, and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him went away. And a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. And Joab said unto the man that told him, And behold, thou sawest him? And why didst thou not smite him there to the ground? And, what, and, and I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a, and, and a girdle. And the man said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in mine hand, yet would I not put forth mine hand against the king's son? For in our hearing the king charged thee and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Beware that none touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise I should have wrought falsehood against me, mine own life. For there is no matter hid from the king, and thou thyself would have had set thyself against me. Then said Joab, uh, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. And the ten young men that bare Joab's armor compassed about and smote Absalom and slew him. And Joab blew the trumpet and the people returned from pursuing after Israel for Joab held back the people. And they took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood and laid a very great heap of stone, stones upon him. And all Israel fled, every one to his tent. Absalom, David's son, was seeking to overthrow David, to take the king, kingdom for himself. He had done all manner of evil things. He had become David's enemy. Let's fast forward in this same chapter. Let's go to 26. And the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called unto the porter and said, Behold, another man running alone. But the king said, He also bringeth tidings. And the watchman said, Me think that the running of the foremost is like the running of Ahimaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man, and cometh with good tidings. And Ahimaz called and said unto the king, All is well? And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king and said, Blessed be the Lord thy God, which hath delivered up the men that lifted up their hand against my lord the king. Watch what David says in verse 29. And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? He had just heard tidings that there was a victory wrought and his concern is for Absalom, his son. And Hamas answered, when Joab sent the king's servant and me thy servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. And the king said unto him, turn aside and stand here. And he turned aside and stood still. And behold, Cushy came and Cushai says, Tidings, my lord, the king, for the Lord hath avenged thee this day of all them that rose up against thee. And the king said unto Cushai, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushai answered, The enemies of my lord, the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as that young man is. And the king was much moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And, and as he went, thus he said, Oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom. Would God I had died for thee, O oh Absalom, my son, my son. Love thy neighbor. Love thine enemies. What greater love is there that man would give up his life for his friend? David says, would that I had died for thee, O Absalom, my son, my son. David, a man after God's own heart.
But those are human enemies, right? Let's turn to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28. Let's look at verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the psalm full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Who is this king of Tyrus? Let's keep reading. Verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before the kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Let's go back to verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation. What is a lamentation? Yeah, I looked that one up too. One of the definitions was, was was a dirge, right? A, a a a a song of mourning. A song of mourning for Lucifer. When we think of this, we, we have to understand that God created Lucifer. God made him perfect, blessed him abundantly with all manner of things. He had a very high position in his house. But through the prophet Ezekiel, he's saying, Take up a lamentation, a song of mourning. We know that sin will be no more, and sinners will be no more. But have you ever, ever thought about what that means to the Father? Those who hold on to sin, the originator of sin, the sympathizers, the 
Do you imagine him rejoicing in that day? Rejoicing that he has to destroy sinners, fallen angels, Lucifer who became Satan. You know, the Bible says that God will wipe away all tears from, from their eyes. But I have to wonder who, who wipes away his tears. A song of mourning. A dirge, a funeral song. We read the song of Moses earlier, parts of it anyway. Revelation 15.3 says, And they sing the song of Moses, servant of God. Song of victory. How God had triumphed over sin. But in Revelation 15.3 it also says, "And And the song of the Lamb. Saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. Love thine enemy. Proverbs 25, 21 says, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Paul takes it up in Romans 12, 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Coals of fire. Let's turn over to Song of Solomon. We talked about the Song of Moses. Song of the Lamb, a little bit. Let's see if there's more. Song of Solomon, chapter 8. Um, Let's begin at verse 5. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her, beloved? I raised thee up under the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bare thee. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire. Both Proverbs and Romans said, you heat coals of fire upon his head. Coals of fire, which hath the most vehement flame. Verse 7, many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contemned. The song of Moses, the song of victory, the song of the Lamb. Do 
And Jesus said, in his last words, well, upon the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb, the song of experience, There's rejoicing for victory over sin. There's pain for those who don't obtain such victory. It's a two part experience. Ezekiel also describes it as sighing and crying. Sighing because of the sin. Sighing because those would not let go of the sin. Crying because they didn't and it was now too late. There's no rejoicing and that destruction. We read in Ezekiel also that the fire came from within. Saul said of David, you smote my heart. The Bible declares that every knee will bow and every knee confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee means every knee. Sinners, fallen angels, And Satan. Fire from within. One last thought. We think of enemies. Romans 5.10 For if we, for if when we or enemies. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. We were enemies. And he loved us. And so he bids us Love our enemies. Do good to them that despitefully use you, persecute you, say all manner of evil against you, that you may be children of the Heavenly Father, the beloved enemy. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, because you love us so much. We thank you, Father, that you continue to love us and will continue to love us. We thank you, Father, in that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet enemies, You allowed your son to die for us. Father, as we behold him, may we be changed into his image. May we be recreated.
may we cease to be enemies. May we receive the salvation that you offer us. May we receive the atonement. May we understand that we have to be changed in order to see your face. Let us, Father, have the confidence that you will finish the work that you've begun in us. May we be able to sing both the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. May it be our experience according to your will in Christ Jesus. Amen.